we're in a place where for, for certain parts of the year, we've got all the required ingredients for wildfire. The organisms that live here are adapted to it. Fire is just part of the mix here. Where a fire burns, and for a period of time after that fire has burned, there's insufficient fuel to carry another fire. You have fires reburning the same area um, through time, where one fire moderates the severity of the subsequent fire. When fire is taken out of the system, then you, you really do run the risk of starting to cause harm. Professional forestry emerged from sort of a Central and Western European school of thought. And so as those first professional foresters began to expand out here into the West, and they encountered burned over forests, actively burning wildfires, the reaction almost universally was fire is a threat and the enemy of our timber resource. And so they began to put them out. The effects of fire exclusion and fire suppression are, are large. Fires are becoming harder to control because there's so much more fuel on the landscape than there was historically. As a research ecologist, I study fire in wilderness areas. What better place to study how forest ecosystems work than the place where they're most intact? where natural forces, of which wildfire is, you know, one of the most fundamental, uh, are allowed to express themselves. If you're gonna study fire, you need to study where fires occurred. <laughs> the Selway Bitterroot has one of the longest uh, records of what I'll call active fire in the modern period. This is the place, at least on Forest Service managed land, where we moved away from a complete suppression, complete control policy to allowing, to deliberately allowing natural ignitions to burn. And because of that, we're basically able to study fire in its uh, natural habitat. For us as scientists, there's there's sort of almost a mandate to come here because this is where a lot of the interesting unanswered questions are and where we have the opportunity in the form of nearly 50 years of managed wildfire that's created places for us to study and figure out how it works. On the challenges side of doing research in wilderness, well, one of the things is it's just harder. You're in a remote setting. It's complex terrain, it's steep. You're in an environment where, you know, oftentimes risk is higher. I think it was on a log piece sticking up that I stepped right on. Can you find it a hole? <laughs> yeah. 
there are no roads, <laughs> so getting to sites is difficult. There's very few trails. Just getting around in a place like this is really challenging. This sucks. <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is almost six o'clock. We started this morning at 6.30. Just getting to the water source now. Gonna set up camp and get back after in the morning. So, oh yeah. out and have a full field season in a master's was really an exciting opportunity for me and being out here has been amazing and being able to spend this much time in the wilderness and looking at fire I think will be a very formative experience for me. I'm studying fire and fire history in the Salway Bitterroot Wilderness. We'll do those on our last day, those three, boom, boom, boom. I'm looking at the effects of fire frequency over the last hundred years and how that affects forest structure and fuels. We take some of the biophysical data initially woody debris and fine fuels. The deviation species of all of the trees. When you can look at places that have burned a lot, like the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness, you can start to see what a natural fire regime looks like. And you could compare and contrast that to what we're seeing outside of wilderness. If we set as a goal suppression of all wildfires and keep that as our goal, then we're probably not going to have a lot of success. We put it out because the near-term threat, we don't want to deal with that. But all we're doing is deferring and oftentimes magnifying the risk, the potential damage of an inevitable fire event. Fires are going to continue to burn whether we want them to or not. The thing that we have to do is be more aggressive about putting fire on the landscape on our terms. A dramatic one or two orders of magnitude more area treated with prescribed fire. And a willingness to use managed wildfire events under a wider, a wider range of conditions. What I wonder and worry about a little bit is will the ethical responsibility of restoring wildfire and letting wildfire have a place, you know, how do we sustain that sort of, a, of an ethic and a commitment to stewardship through time? I hope that we're able to sustain that. 